This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So you know how to create a basic VFX scene, but there is one important element that determines whether your video looks realistic or it just looks wrong, and that is reflections. Today I'll be going over a client project I worked on not too long ago and I'll be showing you how I capture proper reflections in Blender. So this is the background video we are working with and we want the bag to come out of the door and have realistic reflections on the glass. But before we talk about reflections, let me quickly go through all the steps that I took to get to this point from tracking to simulations. First I started with getting the 3D models for the product and the Sephora bag. Then because I want my rigid body simulation to be as smooth and fast as possible, I created a simpler copy of the product and parented the high poly product to the low poly version. So the simulation is calculated with simple geometry but we can see the result with the high poly version. Then I made sure the simple model doesn't show up in the final render. It's like using proxies in video editing. Next is the camera tracking. I tried using After Effects for this but for some reason it didn't turn out well. So I did the tracking in Blender. I have a bunch of tutorials about camera tracking on my channel if you are interested in that. Then using the track markers I got from the camera tracking, I recreated the environment. This process just involves starting with a plane and extruding along the floors and the walls until your CG environment lines up with your background video. Now if we take a look at my materials, we'll see that my CG environment looks all white. But we don't want that. We want the walls and the floors to have the same materials as the video so we can have accurate reflections. The fastest way I've found to do this is by adding an image texture to the material of the environment and using the background video as the image source. I adjusted the frames to the number of frames in the video and the final step is adding a mapping and texture coordinate node. But instead of connecting the vector to UV, you connect the vector to window. That gives you accurate color bounces and reflections as far as you are looking through the camera. Also make sure auto refresh is Checked. Now for lighting, I made sure I added some practical warm area light here to replace the light coming from up there. For the rest of it, I just used an HDRI and a huge emissive plane on the ceiling. For the actual simulation, it wasn't anything complex. I just took my low poly product and low poly bag, duplicated the products all over the place and dropped them in the bag. This would require a lot of trial and error to get it looking right. But then that's what simulations are all about, trial and error. I made the bag an animated active rigid body and added location and rotation keyframes to make it slide forward and tip over. Now that we have our environment and simulation done, let's talk about organizing the entire scene into collections and view layers. Now the collections I use for most projects are foreground, shadow and reflections. In my foreground collection, I want to move the bag and the products inside of it. In my shadows collection, I want to move the environment inside of it. All the walls and floors except the glass windows. Those planes I put in for the glass windows would end up being in the reflections collection. After creating the collections, we would need to create view layers with the same names. So under view layers, we would add new layers and call them foreground, shadows and reflections. To set up our view layers properly, click on this funnel and make sure indirect only is turned on. Then when we are in the foreground layer, we set the other two collections to indirect only. When we are in the shadows layer, we set the other two collections to indirect only. And we do the same thing for the reflections layer. The final setup you want to do in the reflections layer is to come to the view layers property here and make sure that glossy indirect is checked and denoising data is also checked. We are doing this because we don't want to see the window itself in the render, what we want to see is the reflection of the product in the window and that is an indirect light source bouncing off of a glossy object so we choose glossy indirect. Skillshare is an online learning community with tens of thousands of classes ranging from business, design, photography, videography, 3D, web development, content creation, anything you would possibly need is probably on there. So recently I moved to the UK about six months ago and I tried getting back into photography after six years and it's been quite interesting where I realized that I knew almost nothing about retouching. The last time I did any major photo retouching was like 2019 and I wasn't even that good at it back then. So I needed to level up on my retouching skills. So I went on Skillshare and I found a lot of photography related classes. How to retouch using Lightroom, using Photoshop, using different plugins. I've learned so much in the process. Now I know the secret proof photographers used to make their photos pop. My pictures have gone from looking like this to this thanks to Skillshare. Now for my community out here, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So if you love exploring creative hobbies like myself, or you just want help with productivity or business, you should absolutely check out Skillshare. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now we have all the collections and the view layer set up. What we have to do next is to set up our compositing nodes so we can make sure we are arranging all those things properly. I hope you are still following. If you are, kindly hit the like button to show your support. Thank you. Going to the composite 
existing tab and make sure use nodes is checked. By default, you get these two nodes, render layers to composite. Render layers and view layers are practically the same thing. I duplicated this render layer node twice and selected each view layer I created from the dropdowns. Then I added a file output node which basically mirrors your output property settings. Under the node tab, I added three imputes called foreground, shadows and reflections. Then I connected the foreground layer image to foreground and I did the same thing for the shadows and the reflections. But for the reflection, make sure you connect glossy indirect instead of image. Finally, since our glossy indirect image is very noisy, I added a denoise node and connected normal to normal and albedo to albedo. What this setup would do is to render three images per frame. One would have the products, one would have the shadows and one would have the reflections which is what we need for our comp work. Now these are the settings I use for my render. For most product renders, I don't use a high render sample except there are a lot of reflective surfaces or surface imperfections or surface details. I use anything from 40 to 120 samples and I increase the noise threshold to something like 0.1 to 0.5. If you want a full breakdown of my render settings, I made a video about just that. Now I like doing all my compositing in After Effects so I render all the layers that I need from Blender. After the rendering is done, let's go to After Effects for some quick touch up. In After Effects, we will import our three render layers and our background video. Then we will stack them in the correct order. The correct order you should layer your passes in compositing should be the background video, then the shadows, then the reflections, then the foreground layer. So this is what we have now but the reflection doesn't look right yet. The key here is to change the blending mode of the reflection layer from normal to add. Now it looks better. I also reduce the opacity of the reflections a lot to about 18%. This opacity number depends on the scene. Some windows are so reflective that you will see the reflections super sharp and super clear but not in this case. Just make sure you use references. For example, we can see what other reflected objects looks like on the window. The final thing I did here is to mask this chair out. Since the products are meant to slide underneath it, I used the pen tool to mask the chair and track the mask across the entire shot. Then I took that cutout mask to the top of the layer since it's literally in front of the foreground elements. After a little bit of color correction, blurring, shadow matching, etc., we have this. Huh? and we will have our VFX shot with the reflections in the right spots. If you are still watching right now, you're a real one. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something, especially if you don't normally do this in your VFX workflow. Anyway, until we meet again, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Until we meet again! <laughs>